Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to my first official build with the new Life and Death expansion pack from The Sims 4. I asked you guys in Discord what you wanted to see, albeit a little cryptically, and you voted overwhelmingly for a starter. I was expecting it to be a little bit more even, but starter really pulled ahead, so here we are. Now, the life and death world of Ravenwood is based on Romania, which I'm not very familiar. Okay, I'm not familiar at all with the architecture of Romania. So instead of spending hours and hours researching and then not being able to make the video, I just decided I would try to base it on some of the buildings in the world to help it look like it really fit in. This build in particular, I was basing on the house just behind it. You'll see me like zoom over there a few times here in the speed build footage. And I was trying to like mimic some of the general shape, some of the wall height, the roof shape, um, where the building was sort of coming in and out, the general window placement, all that stuff. And I love the build by stuff in this pack so much. <laughs> like I'm not a spooky person in general. I really love rundown things. I really love old things. I love history and homes are just a great way for me to express that love of history and understanding the past and how it got us to the present and just all these pieces fitting together, right? Love it. But I'm not generally like a spooky person, right? Like I don't, I'm not against Halloween, but it's not one of my favorite holidays. I don't do a lot of like skulls and stuff. It just, it's not really my personality. I prefer neon lights and cats, right? But, but I love this pack so much. Yes, there are a ton of skull motifs. We'll see a lot of them through here on the fireplaces, the doors, the wallpapers, all that stuff. But just the they're just so pretty. The items are so beautiful. So anyway, I was I was really excited about that. Now let's talk about the floor plan. I'm going to mention it a little bit and then um, eventually, spoiler alert, I'm going to realize that this is way too expensive and redo most of this. But when I was starting to put it together and I was really happy with the size, it was going to be a two bedroom, two bath. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like I can do a two bedroom starter. I've done this before. Turns out I've not built a starter in a very long time, let alone any sort of budget home, really. So yeah, it, um, it didn't work out too well. So what you see here is not what we end up with, <laughs> but I figured I'd keep it in anyway to just talk a little bit more about the pack. Just chat with you guys for a little bit and have a video that's longer than five minutes because turns out starters are really small. And then once you really get going, it doesn't take too long to sort out. I, I had to rework the stairs so many times. Also, choosing whenever you do a starter for a specific pack, for most of the packs, you have to be very careful, I think, when you're trying to balance items from the new pack versus base game items, right? Because sometimes items from the new packs are quite cheap, right? Like Werewolves has a lot of rundown stuff that is pretty inexpensive, so it'd be fairly easy to really use a lot of werewolf stuff in a werewolf's starter build. But this is not werewolves. This is life and death, and it has... Quite a few very fancy elements, right? Oh, also, I was trying to make a sunroof, and here it didn't work out. I tried again later. You'll see it in a minute. But the glass roof texture wasn't deleting the ceiling of the room automatically, which I thought was very strange. So if anybody knows what's up with that, and you could let me know in the comments, that would be swell. Anyway, um, but with life and death, there there are a few cheaper items. Like, the wallpapers, I think, are all two simoleons, which is great. And the windows aren't badly priced either. And there are a couple of decently priced doors. But when you start going into the furniture, it's where it really starts to get tricky. Most of the furniture is on the like mid-range to high range price wise. Uh, like I was trying to put a mirror in the bathroom. I think it was like 200 something simoleons, right? So I can either go with this really nice, elegant mirror to add some fanciness to the bathroom, or I can pick a 40 simoleon base game mirror and try to bring in the fanciness some other way. So balancing that price point for a starter home with the available materials and make it look like it belongs to that world and all that stuff, it was a hassle. Um, so I did end up using the windows and the wallpapers and the doors externally, but I didn't end up using the railing, for example. I ended up sticking with this ladder-like railing. I did change the colors and a few other things, but this railing is fairly cheap and I decided to use quite a bit of it. Um, also the spandrels. I ended up adding spandrels and I chose a cheap base game spandrel instead because it still suited the general shape that I was looking for for our structure. It fit um, the color. It just didn't cost <laughs> too much, right? So finding that balance can be a bit of a challenge. I love this new floor though. I was trying to figure out if I could do a fun pattern with the floor, if any of my base game floor colors matched it well enough. And the ones that were the best matches were unfortunately too expensive for me to keep in the home. 
So that was a bit of a bummer. I ended up, I think I ended up keeping that floor though. Oh, and I did paint the ceilings. Uh, I grabbed some gameplay footage when I was doing playtesting and stuff. So you'll see that at the end. And I think that painting the ceilings in this home really accentuates that dark, cozy, mystical feeling that I think we're probably uh, all going to be going for for this world, at least as we start, right? A pattern that we see with <laughs> with our games is when the pack comes out, we're all about that pack. And then, you know, a couple months later, we're like, okay, what else can we do with this space? So I expect, you know, that we're going to start seeing mostly dark, moody builds in this world for the next few months. And then it's going to start branching out and start bringing in some pastels and bringing in some more whimsical fairy vibes, and I'm excited to see that. Oh, speaking of what we're going to be seeing in this world, this is a map that I found of all the different creators who submitted builds to this world, and it was interesting to go through all of them. I think personally that Simsphony's builds were the best uh, in the world. Those were the ones where I kind of had the fewest why, why, why? moments, you know, as I am prone to do. However, we also know I'm an extremely judgmental person. So there you go. Um, but I, I did look through all of them. I really liked their public lots. I thought they were very well designed. They felt open and playable, but not open and just EA style vacant, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I really liked looking at all those lots. Now I have not looked at the Grimm's office lot because I haven't actually gotten into gameplay here. I expect that we'll get into some gameplay with this here and there a little bit um, with our Let's Play Rags to Riches series with our current heir, Fred. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, back to the floor plan. I was fighting this so hard. I really liked what was happening, but it was just so expensive. Oh, it was so expensive. At some point, I just ended up gutting most of it and redoing the whole thing. I liked this staggered look on the front. I really liked doing the... Uh, I think I ended up doing plaster covered bricks and then bricks from the new pack. So plaster covered bricks actually from base game because they had a little bit of a darker swatch and I liked that better. Um, and then the bricks from the new pack, I really liked that combination, but I just couldn't get the, the shape to work the way that I wanted to and also have all of the rooms work out the way that I wanted to and also have the budget work out the way that I wanted to, not to mention the roof, okay? These big, steep, half-hipped roof pieces were not playing nice. Um, now, the way that I wanted to roof it, I ended up needing to do the main floor. Uh, it had to be three tiles larger than the upper floor in order for that roof line to connect the way that I wanted to. But when you have a set limit like that, and you're also trying to figure out a very specific floor plan, and you're trying to make it feel like somewhat grand, right? We don't want this to be an absolutely squishy little cottage, but also we want it to like function. I don't know. It was, it was a lot. I think, I think we're getting close to the final shape at this point. Yeah, I think that's pretty close. I may have changed a couple other things still. And I really did want to go for closed off rooms. I just thought that that would really look best, all things considered. Um, given the age of the home, right, you'd go for more of a, a closed off floor plan. But then the more I was thinking about it and the more I was looking at it and the more I was stressing over my budget limitations, right, because this is supposed to be a starter, uh, the more I realized that I just had to let that go. Then I was going to have to go with an open floor plan and try to uh, close things off a little bit. I, at some point, do move the back door, I think, as well. Yeah, this went, this went through a lot. I don't know how much of this is still going to be in the video. Um, this is probably going to end up being pretty short because I don't want to t keep everything in, like all of my mistakes. Not because I'm ashamed of them, like obviously I'm talking about them, but... Uh, just because I feel like at some point watching a speed build when things change too much, you kind of lose the plot and you get a little bit lost as to, hey, like, wait, wasn't this room over here? Or wasn't it over there? So we'll see what I can do in editing. Uh, speaking of editing, though, uh, the way that I edit speed builds, it doesn't really allow for a first cut versus final cut. So Gable Gang, you are getting an early access to this one instead of an extended cut. I hope that you're able to enjoy having this video a few days early, though. On the plus side, if you leave a comment on this video, that means that everybody gets to see it and everybody gets to see how cool you are. Uh, for real though, thank you so much for the memberships and for supporting the channel. Um, I know that October has been a pretty rough month for content creation. I know I've been streaming a lot, um, but outside of that, the time that I generally have to make videos, right? Like how I was able to make videos before the kid was in school all day, um, unfortunately has been taken up by 
basically a month of Mondays. I, I've honestly lost track of how many times I had to go to the doctor for urgent surprise medical problems at least twice, maybe three times, which is a lot for one month. And then the kid was sick a couple of times and we just had some surprise family stuff come up and it just... <sighs> October was not a kind month for content creation. So if anybody was worried that like the Build Like a Nerd series was dead or the Rebuild series, if any of our series on the channel were dead, if you were concerned about them not being resurrected, fret not, my friends, for they shall return. October just sucked. So just in case you were worried about that, <laughs> um, that's, that's kind of where we're sitting at right now. All right, so we're moving into furnishing, and this is a good time to bring back what I was saying earlier about balancing like cheap stuff that will fit in a starter, but also keeping it posh enough to not just be like a gross beige sadness puddle, right? Like this isn't an EA build. Uh, we don't need everything to be neon and we don't need everything to be beige. So finding the balance there, um, it's tricky. It's tricky. Like I did end up going for a round table because this is a new table from the new pack. So I was like, okay, we can bring that in for a smidge of fanciness, but I'm going to stick with some of these slightly cheaper base game chairs. I did go for the mega chairs where it aren't the cheapest ones, but I really thought that the cushion kept it on that slightly more elevated side. Like I'm trying to give your Sims a nice life here. It's just a heavily budgeted nice life, you know? So we worked on that. And then the couches. There are new seating items that come with the new pack, but they're not the cheapest, right? Like I want this to feel old. I want it to feel like, you know, maybe you got a great deal on it. Maybe it was, you know, it was, it was a steal, right? I don't want it to feel like, um, <laughs> like super cheap, even if it is, if that makes sense. Oh, and then the landscaping. Oh, and then I had to figure out what to do with landscaping. Cause at this point I think I had like, let's see, did I do the bedroom yet? If I didn't do the bedroom yet, I just had a few thousand left to work with. And I was like, oh geez, what am I going to do for the landscaping? So I had to think of something that would be cheap and fill in a lot of the lot. And I remembered that a lot of other creators actually who built lots for this world utilized terrain manipulation which we love to see. I was a little disappointed that the lots themselves aren't like manipulated previously, like they're all flat still, but at least there is some terrain happening in this game and the lots are large enough to allow for some of that manipulation. So I use that to my advantage. And just now I think you can see the difference between having a totally flat lot versus having this house up on a hill. It just fills in the space so much more nicely. So there you go. That's how I was able to make the lot appear landscaped without even putting any landscaping in. Um, it gives your eye enough stuff to look at, enough movement that you're not just going to be bored out of your skull. Um, I did utilize, this isn't like an EA restrictions challenge or anything. So I did utilize free placement. I did utilize move objects. I did utilize uh, scaling objects up and down. But I was trying to be very careful and just pull from the $20 plants section and the $20 rocks. And I think I did okay. Like, I, I think it feels decently landscaped, like believably, right? It, it looks believable to me. And I was able to add a few activities outside as well. So we'll see that in a few minutes, I guess. Um, but yes, the terrain manipulation was, I think, much needed. Also, if you didn't catch it, my trick for putting a house on a hill, especially if you've already built it, is you raise the foundation level up to the level that you want the hill to be at. And then you use the flatten terrain tool. Then you click inside the house and then move outside the house and that will bring it up to that foundation level. And then you just raise the foundation a little bit more to give the house a foundation again. And there you go, you have a house on a hill. So that's how I do it. I feel like that gives me the best control. Oh gosh, what else was I working on here? Oh, the rugs, I did use the new rugs. Okay, so the new rugs, see, those are slightly cheaper, but the fireplace, first of all, it was too tall. Um, it is a medium wall height fireplace for sure. So the fireplace was too tall and also just too expensive. Also the bed, or I think there are a couple of new beds. Very nice, very expensive. Uh, the new lighting, a little bit on the pricey side. So I had to sort of decide, okay, am I putting in new lights? So am I keeping base game lights? Put in a new desk with a base game chair, right? Just trying to find those combinations that's going to make this definitely, like without a doubt, be a life and death pack build without costing an arm and a leg. <laughs> you know, we don't need an early funeral for my budget. Oh, also like the chimney. I tried to use the new chimney and ended up going for a slightly cheaper one just because I didn't feel like the chimney was that integral to the structure. Um, but I did use one of the new swing sets because it adds so much character to the outside of the build. And I feel like it just fills in that space really nicely as well. 
here's me finicking here's me working with the mirrors again trying to figure out decorations i didn't end up putting in upper cabinets um so another sacrifice either go with the super bland super cheap base game cabinets and add upper cabinets or you go with the slightly nicer escargot countertops and not use upper cabinets and then the price kind of evens out so no upper, no upper cabinets but obviously if you could decide you want to add those go for it and then for the art over the fireplace i ended up just going with cheap prints sized up and reorganized a little bit just because the new stuff from the new pack either didn't fit or was just way too expensive um to make sense for a starter home oh did i end up switching the chairs no i didn't okay faked myself out there for a second oh did i put the back door back you know what at this point i'm so lost i don't even know where i ended up putting what doors i changed it around so much but let's see what am i doing now oh i think now i was like 200 over the budget so i was trying to figure out what i could do so i switched out the mirror again i switched out the bathtub for a slightly cheaper shower um i made a couple of areas a little bit smaller i made sure i was using spandrels instead of walls where i was able to made sure that i didn't have any fences like in front of stairs right um oh that's right and then i lowered the foundation and actually replaced those new stairs with cheaper base game stairs uh, the new stairs are very nice, but I just didn't feel like they were adding enough to the home to justify the extreme cost difference, because I think the ones I ended up using are like $5 per tile, essentially, and the new ones are 20 or something. I don't know, just like significantly more expensive. So with all of that, I was able to save enough money to not only actually have a completely functional home, oh yeah, and then I realized that the law was actually facing the wrong direction, uh, but I could actually add some pond stickers. And then when your sim moves in, they have exactly 137 simoleons left. So this is definitely on the high end of starter home. Um, this is not a cheap starter home, but I, I really, really wanted it to feel worth it. You know, like I don't want it to feel like a starter, even though it is. So I, I did work pretty hard on that. Hopefully it paid off. Obviously, you guys can let me know in the comments down below. Again, I did play test it. So everything works. Here's my sim showing off all the stuff that works. Um, I, I, I really think that painting the ceilings added a lot to the vibes of this build. 10 out of 10 recommend painting the ceilings whenever you are able. Um, that's a great feature and I'm so glad that they added it. I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's anything else I have to say about this. Just a quick little speed build video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, this, this pack has, has been lovely to build with. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to see what else we could build together in the future, so... That's what I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for building with me, and I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye!